I thought I'd spend a bit of time making corrections, responding to criticisms, and perhaps clarifying a few things. First of all, thanks for the messages, positive and negative, and I assure you that I do appreciate and read them. One of the most common questions I get asked is, why don't you make more videos? Well, the reason is simple. To make just one video, I first have to spend a lot of time listening to what's being claimed on the internet, in newspapers and TV reports. I have to ensure that any myth I debunk is something that's widespread and popularly believed. That way I can't be accused of creating a straw man argument. Then I spend even more time going through the scientific literature and reading papers that deal with that particular subject. If I didn't bother doing all this research, then of course I could churn out several videos a week just by sitting in front of a video camera and spouting opinions and beliefs. The whole point of this channel is to get away from mindless opinion and belief and to explain science as it's represented in the scientific literature. I thought Monitor 301 summed it up rather well in this comment from the forum of my video, Who Am I? No noteworthy scientific credentials to speak of. He's referring to me. And a similar point from Research Siempre. Who is Potholder? And what scientific research has he conducted? Just reading IPCC talking points doesn't count. Well, I'm happy to tell you that I don't do any scientific research. All I can do is report what people who do have scientific credentials have discovered through their research. By the way, Research Siempre, I don't use the IPCC as a source as you could quite easily ascertain by reading the list of my sources provided on the videos and in the video descriptions. In a similar vein, this kind of comment was also quite common. Potola 54 claims that CO2 drives warming. Actually, the claim is that CO2 is one of the factors that drives climate, but never mind. The point is, it's not my claim, because I'm not a climate researcher. What's presented in my videos are the discoveries and conclusions of people who are climate researchers. Now, of course, I may get things wrong in reporting the science. In my last series, Our Origins Made Easy, I issued two errata videos correcting mistakes that had been pointed out by viewers. And I'm also very grateful to those who've pointed out mistakes in the climate change series. So here they are. Several people noticed that this animation in the first video was wrong. It should be the electron shells that are excited, not the nucleus. Zebauer pointed out a mistake in language in my video Climate Change the Objections, in which I said this. A very good correlation between global temperatures and solar output over most of the last 250 years, but not the very period that covers a dramatic rise in global temperatures. I agree the term dramatic is meaningless and hyperbolic. Scientifically speaking, the rise in temperatures should be described as statistically significant. In other words, it's due to something other than normal background fluctuations. There were two mistakes in my most recent video, Hurricanes, Atolls and Coral. The calcium carbonate that makes up coral skeletons takes the mineral form aragonite, not calcite. And the chemical equation I showed in the paper related to lower saturation of carbonate ions in seawater, not the formation of carbonic acid. This is yet another problem for coral that I didn't have time to discuss, but both saturation and acidification are discussed in the same paper. I just put up the wrong image by mistake. Here's another error in my videos which looks rather serious. This guy Potholer isn't worth the time to watch. I caught him in another video manipulating data the second after claiming the other side of the debate is manipulating. I've been manipulating data? Well then I definitely have to correct this and apologize profusely to my subscribers. What did I manipulate, night version? In the video Climate Change Supplement, at around one minute, watch how he uses the images to jump past Jones's reply to question A and jumps to B. Oh, so I didn't manipulate any data at all. Apparently I missed something. Okay, still, let's take a look and see what I missed. Here's the part of the video Night Version mentions. Night Version goes on. I tried to read the text, but it is concealed. Well, no, it's not concealed at all. I was just giving you an establishing shot to show the web page with the BBC logo at the top and then I dissolved to the answer that was the focus of the Daily Mail story. If you want to see the entire BBC web page, I give a link to it in my video description. So if I did want to conceal this information, obviously I'm doing a piss poor job. He does this because he doesn't like Jones's answer to A. But science has nothing to do with liking or disliking answers. It's only concerned with whether answers are based on proper observation and are correct. No, the reason I focused on the answer to question B is because that was the focus of the Daily Mail headline that was copied all over the internet.
So what is this mysterious answer A? Well, Jones looks at three periods of warming over the past 150 years, 1860 to 1880, 1910 to 1940, and 1975 to 2009. And he told the BBC all three have statistically significant periods of warming. At first, I didn't know why Night Version thought this was so extraordinary. You can find these and other examples of past warming in dozens of papers, and they're clearly shown in reconstructions. But then I searched the political websites, and it turns out that this is yet another argument that climate change is natural, the climate always changes, and that there's nothing unusual about the current rise in temperatures. Anyone who's watched this series knows that, of course, that's true. Carbon dioxide is a natural gas that's been around for billions of years, and many times in the past the Earth has warmed and cooled as levels of carbon dioxide have risen and fallen. But as I've also mentioned more than once... The climate isn't driven by carbon dioxide alone, because carbon dioxide isn't the only factor that affects global temperatures. I don't want to go through all this again, just watch the earlier videos. Climate is driven by a number of different factors known as forcings. The 1860 to 1880 rise in temperatures coincided with an increase in solar forcing. The 1910 to 1940 period also experienced solar forcing, but climatologists have found other influencing factors, such as higher levels of carbon dioxide and Atlantic Ocean circulation patterns. All these forcings have to be looked at together, not just carbon dioxide alone. While we're on the subject of the BBC Jones Q&A, Guffpot, who writes more words on my channel than I do, insisted that the Daily Mail got its headline right. So, as always when someone points out a mistake, I asked where and when Jones had said there'd been no warming since 1995. Guffpot responded, Are you really insisting those specific words must be spoken? No, but I do insist that if a newspaper is going to paraphrase, then it does have a duty not to completely change the meaning of what someone says. In case I made a mistake, let's look again at what Jones really did say. I also calculated the trend for the period 1995 to 2009. This trend at 0.12 degrees centigrade per decade is positive. To correctly paraphrase what Jones is saying, the temperature trend is up. He's saying the Earth has been warming by about 0.12 degrees centigrade per decade since 1995. He goes on, but not significant at the 95% significance level. The positive trend is quite close to the significance level. In other words, there's maybe a 90% confidence level that it's more likely than not that the warming is caused by something other than background fluctuations, uh, but we can't be 95% confident of that. However confident we are about the cause of this warming, whether it's due to carbon dioxide, reflections from the moon, or Al Gore letting off steam, the fact is, Jones said that the Earth has been warming since 1995. Could anyone really think the Daily Mail got that right when it claimed the complete opposite? It's like watching this and then seeing the headline in the Daily Mail the next day or seeing this headline in 1963 or this. I often wonder just how outrageously wrong a claim has to be before critics of climate science have the sense to disown it. If you're going to see science as some kind of a game, does it really mean you have to defend someone on your team who says the sky is green? By all means castigate the IPCC for sloppy mistakes like the melting of Himalayan glaciers or Al Gore's misrepresentation of sea level rise. But then equally acknowledge the sloppy mistakes by researchers like Soon and Balunas or fabrications in the film The Great Global Warming Swindle. If the Daily Mail obviously got something wrong, don't stubbornly insist it was right simply because it's on what you childishly believe is your side. We should all be mature enough to want to understand what's happening in nature and acknowledge when something's right and when it's wrong. Another common complaint is that I've ignored something. Well, some of the myths people think I'm ignoring are on other videos, like the warming troposphere. You really have to watch them all before hitting the keyboard and saying I've missed something. Some of the myths I haven't dealt with yet, and other myths are completely new to me because they keep popping up on the internet like gophers. But Zabawa, you can debunk a lot of these myths quite easily yourself. Just go online and find out where the information comes from. If there's no source for it, chances are it's made up. If a source is quoted, track that down. Then find out where that source got the information from. Track that right back to its origins, then compare the original research with the myth. 
And if you think something on Wikipedia or something you thought up at the breakfast table debunks a hundred years of well-researched physics, try to find out why researchers haven't thought of the same thing, or why they do know about it but don't come to the same conclusions that you do. I wish I could investigate other mistakes people say I've made in the videos, but for some reason they seem very reluctant to tell me what they are. All I get are generalizations like this. I don't mind being told I've made mistakes in the videos. I've repeatedly invited corrections because I want to ensure that any errors are expunged from my channel. So any time people tell me I'm lying or I've made mistakes, I've always asked them to specify what these are. After Warhead 3000 kept telling me the videos were full of lies, but couldn't summon up the strength to tell me where they were, I even posted a form for him to fill out to make it easier. So I would welcome the citation of any mistakes, and I don't even mind if they're characterized as lies. But if you're going to make accusations like these, do me the courtesy of substantiating them. I go to a lot of trouble to ensure that my videos are an accurate reporting of what's in the scientific literature. I have to go through dozens of papers, catalogue authors, publications, dates, and make notes on the evidence presented. I have to check references to make sure I found and read every important paper on the issue. So if you claim these videos are full of lies and mistakes, then have the balls or the intelligence or the maturity or the integrity to point them out. After I've done all this work to present a factually accurate reflection of the science as best I can and willingly agree to correct any mistakes, don't just hide behind fatuous accusations that you refuse to substantiate. You have no excuse not to follow up my sources because they're given to you in full. I've got an open forum on every video. No comments on my videos get removed unless they breach the guidelines in the channel. And no one gets blocked. Saying that my videos are full of mistakes and then not being able to pinpoint a single mistake doesn't reflect badly on my videos, it reflects on your shallow level of intellect. It suggests that instead of lifting a finger to check a single fact, you're just sticking your fingers in your ears and shouting liar because you've heard something you didn't particularly want to hear. This is not sceptical, it's infantile. Also, again to detractors, please try to watch the videos before commenting, because mindlessly repeating a myth that's already been busted won't make it magically come to life again. In the fourth video of this series, I cited an analysis of the scientific literature in the 1970s showing that the consensus of another ice age was a complete myth. Remember? Three climatologists searched scientific journals between 1965 and 1979, and yes, they found seven papers predicting not an ice age, but global cooling. The only problem is, they also found 44 articles predicting global warming. Well, guess what? A good myth never dies. Thirty years ago, the scientific consensus was that the climate was cooling. According to scientists of the 1970s, we should be entering a mini ice age. Remember that bit of science? No, I don't. And neither do you. This is either a figment of your imagination or something you've read, and not being the least bit sceptical, something you swallowed without bothering to check. I also rebutted the misconception that an unusual weather event can be linked to climate change. Similarly, unusually cold weather doesn't show there's no anthropogenic climate change. Climate scientists take a moving average of temperatures globally over 5 to 11 years, so hands up those who still think we measure average global temperatures by looking out the bedroom window. Look, I don't mind if you can show that the facts I present are erroneous. As I've said, I'd welcome that because I don't like errors in my videos. So if I cite papers that show the solar system is not warming and papers that show no significant solar activity over the last 30 years, then by all means show me how I read that incorrectly or cite other research that overturns it. Don't just repeat the same old internet myths like this. Unfortunately, time's run out, so I'm going to do two separate videos to look at alleged mistakes in Meet the Scientists and those hacked emails. These videos seem to have provoked the most vehement responses.